Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the notion of congruence in the integers. So here's the definition. So given a natural number n and two integers a and b, we say a is congruent to b modulo n and we write, so the notation is as follows, so a congruent to b mod n if the following is true, so if n divides a minus b. So uh, the, an equivalent definition to this is that a and b have the same remainder when divided by n. So that'll be left as an exercise. It's a pretty good exercise to develop some understanding for this. So let's look at some basic examples of integers that are congruent to each other and then we'll look at some properties of this notion of congruence. So we have 8 is congruent to 3 mod 5, and so that's because 5 divides 8 minus 3. Well, obviously 5 divides 5, so we're okay. And then 20 is congruent to 4 mod 8, and that's because um, 8 divides 20 minus 4, 8 divides 16. Okay, good. Now let's do one more. So 13 is congruent to negative 1 mod 7. And that's because 7 divides 13 minus negative 1. So 7 divides 14. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at some basic properties of this notion of congruence. Okay, this first property that we want to look at for congruence is that uh, congruence modulo n is an equivalence relation. So let's write that as a proposition. So uh, we'll just do it in shorthand. So congruence mod n is an equivalence relation. So as a reminder what that is, uh, we'll spell that out. So that is the following three things are true. So the first one is for all integers a, a is congruent to itself. So a is congruent to a modulo n. And so this is uh, reflexivity. Good, so the, equivalent, the relation congruence mod n is reflexive. So then next we have for all um, a and b in integers. So if a is congruent to b mod n, then b is congruent to a mod n. Good, so this is a notice the, this is the notion of symmetry. In other words, this uh, relation of congruence modulo n is symmetric. And then we have one more, and that is for all um, integers a, b, and c, if a is congruent to b mod n and b is congruent to c mod n, then a is congruent to c mod n. Good, so uh, this is the notion of transitivity. So this relation is transitive. So these three properties together uh, make this equivalence modulo n an equivalence relation.
Um, good, so let's look at, we won't prove the whole thing, but maybe we'll prove part three real quick in the space that we have. So the proof of part three goes as follows. So let's suppose that A is congruent to B mod N and B is congruent to C mod N. Good. So that tells us that A minus B equals N times K for some integer K. Because recall, this means that N divides A minus B, but that means that A minus B is a multiple of N. And uh, B minus C is equal to N times L for some integer L, again, because N divides B minus C. And so if N divides B minus C, B minus C is a multiple of N, so we can write it as follows. Good, and now what we can do is add this equation to this equation. So that'll give us A minus B plus B minus C, that's equal to A minus C, and that's equal to N times L plus K. So what we have is A minus C is a multiple of N, but that means that N divides A minus C, but in turn that means that A is congruent to C mod N. So we'll finish it off. Um, A is congruent to C mod N. Okay, good. So that's the end of the video. We'll look at some more properties in the next video.